Well, let me say, here comes trouble. Here comes the danger sent by the Savior. Welcome. Welcome the Rasta youths. Original Chronics representing, you don't know. Is. Um, I think it's just like um, how much planning we managed to do. And like, it's our only stop only for this run. But we have more shows in Africa for the rest of the year. Well, I mean, Chronics and Dada means what, sister? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds good. Inspiration for my music, or for the music that we channel and the music that we sing, comes from you know, everywhere and everything. You know, um, I couldn't say it's from any specific place. You know, it's life experiences, emotions, stories. You know, um, social commentary in the sense of things that people want to hear said through music, you know, because music is not just about the artist, you know, but the artist should somehow become, um, become, you know, a creator of, of ideas that represent how the people feel and what they're thinking and like, because it's the only way people in Kenya can know how the people in Jamaica is feeling. And the people in Jamaica can know how the people in Kenya is feeling if our art truly reflects that. So, um, we, we, we take inspiration from reality. I think overall, I wish I wrote, um, um, Damien Marley have a song that says, Till Shiloh I shall not forsake thee. I like that song. Vexation of spirit is a waste of Coming from where I'm coming from. You know, and um, it brought about a lot of different feelings and thoughts. Yeah. I was, I was especially thinking about how it will affect how it, would, how it would change and how it would affect the journey and the story of how we started as a young, very young team in Jamaica to now. You know, performing in Africa and traveling to Africa, you know, felt like a great coming home for me. And um, that, that kind of materialized a lot of things that was already in our meditations as youth, you know, and to see many other artists doing that as well, you know, before us and even now coming to Africa to perform and not just one or two places in Africa, but all over because us as youths in the Caribbean, we don't really know exactly where exactly on the continent our ancestors came from. We hear stories, but as far as actual knowledge is concerned, we're still in search for a truth that resonates. So we have to go all over the continent and somehow create a unity so the truth can um, arrive, arise and surface out of that unity. You know? So I think that, that is kind of the highlight of the whole thing for us, being able to be here, you know. Um, I hardly ever think about that still, but you know, if I had a son who was like me, I would be proud of him. Yeah, because we let social media be social media, and reality is reality. Yeah. Yeah, I will never retire being an artist. Um, but there are plans to transcend. You know, there's always plans to transcend. And more than just like plans that deal with material, but also plans of how you are going to transcend as a, 
you know, as a spirit and how your ideas are going to evolve, you know. That Rastafari is a living, is the Almighty, you know, Haile Selassie. I, Emperor of Ethiopia, is Rastafari. That's, um, that's the Rastafari that we refer to, you know, um, the exemplary and the example of how humanity could progress, you know. Humanity could progress in a way where we have lasting peace on the face of the earth, you know, where we could have world citizenship, where we could all be members of a human race and not just members of um, our tribes and not just members of our immediate households and families, but we could be a member of a, a greater family, a primordial family, something that is closer to, to God, you know what I mean? Something that is closer to the Almighty. So, that's what Rastafari is. If I could ever tell any, someone anything about Rastafari, I would first point them to the Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I, and Empress Menenai, the Empress of Ethiopia because within their exemplary life is suggestions of how humanity could progress in a very positive and um, you know a way that transcends all the 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 the, 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 the lower level problems that we are facing now, you know what I mean? And transcend to a, a higher life, you know on the face of the earth. But the youths are slow. The youths are very slow. You go and check it for yourself. The youths are very slow. Like we should be in universities from we were 12. Yeah. Christ was in university when he was 12. And if, if you are a Christian or if you are a Muslim, then you have to use Muhammad as an example. You have to use Christ as an example. When they were children, they were very advanced. We are slow. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> and it's not, it, you know what I mean? We are taking many other drugs. We are, we are taking vaccines that makes us slow. We are drinking alcohol. Nobody drink alcohol more than the youths of today because they, 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 they can't have their own healing. So they buy whatever is sold to them. On Homeboys Radio, we sell them alcohol. On TV, we sell them alcohol. On every media platform, all we sell them is alcohol. And we have never tried our own herbs. Never, we have never given it a try. Now, in California, you have people, in San Francisco, where people is smoking herb all day, they are creating powerful apps such as Uber. They are creating, you know what I mean? The youths of Silicon Valley, they are using herb. Steve Jobs, they use herb. Barack Obama, they use herb. They are not slow, you know what I mean? So, Bob Marley is not slow. Kranix is not slow. Peter Tosh wasn't slow, he was fit, you know? Yeah, we are strong, like we are Rastafari, that's what we is. We are strong and we are fit. We are, we are yogis, we are meditation practitioners, we are scientists, we are musicians, we are artists, we are not slow. So, the leaders need to figure out what is making the youth slow, because they haven't tried herb as yet. You know, we keep talking about weed, weed, weed. Weed is a derogatory thing. Weed is something that you pluck out of the ground. You're talking about the cannabis sativa plant, which is the single most useful herb on the face of the earth. It can create anything from concrete to a cure for glaucoma. You know what I mean? You can, the, 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 from hemp, cannabis sativa, you know what I mean? There's so much, and like for us, we're not like asking governments to do anything anymore. Governments have failed. 
you know the government have failed failed us big time so we look to our, we look inside for for govern for governance and for inspiration of how to move forward because if the people right now the people are drunk they want more alcohol they want more drugs they want more heroin for instance we are coming from Seychelles heroin is a big problem you know what I mean people don't make people don't cultivate heroin in Africa heroin is introduced to us through European channels and through Asian channels but as far as our herbs are concerned you know we have good herbs like we have really good herbs and we should use them you know yeah I, I don't know I think it's love you know because I love I love the life that I'm in right now I also love the body that I'm in you know I have a great appreciation for this chance to live and to be the best that I can be, you know. So I have no doubt that I can be the best that I can be, you know. So I think because of that, you know, whatever you do, you do it with a different energy, you know. Yeah, because if, if you sow a seed with doubt, then whatever you reap will have doubt imprinted in it, you know. Happiness is one of those gifts that the Almighty gives. You know, happiness and peace is a God-given gift. But it has to be sustained. It has to be sustained and it has to be constantly regenerated. You know, and that's where, that's where our responsibility comes in. We are responsible for our own happiness. Well, with the thing with Adidas, I didn't do much um, creative work, and I didn't do any creative work on the clothes. Um, it was purely a, a collaboration to like solidify, like you know, what I mean, our relationship with with Gary, who is who was the. Um, curator of all the creative work that was done on the clothes so you know we looked at the designs from early out before they came out and um, I liked them and I said yo you know we will endorse it so it was more like us endorsing the vibe you know and just kind of materializing the relationship that we had with Gary Aspen over the years you know um, he's a really He's a really cool person that you know I, I always try to keep a relationship with. And I learn a lot from him as far as the creative process um, in, in, in fashion is concerned.